Okay. Nice. So I don't know how well this will work. It's my first time going live in a little while. And I can see that the feature's been updated quite nicely. It seems like it'd be easier to invite other people onto a live stream. And um, overall, I just like the presentation now. It seems a lot more user friendly. Uh, so hello to everyone out there who is interested in preterism or covenant eschatology. Seems to be the theme of the channel, right? <laughs> Seems to be the theme. Um, so I was on the Preterist Facebook. All right, shake the stars from the sky. Alrighty, I like it, I like it. We got some peeps, sold out Coliseum. Um, I was on the Facebook group Preterism. Oh, see that, thank you, thank you. As did mine, as did mine. I'm keeping a nine o'clock tonight because the shop closes that I want to go to at 10 p.m. And it's 9, 9.24 just now. So that keeps me restricted. So I was on the Facebook group Preterism. Facebook group Preterism. And there's like an old depiction of Jesus as the display picture, just in case you're curious which one I'm on. And on 12th of December, at 15.5300 hours, a quote by Thomas Newton was posted. It is to me a wonder how any man can refer part of the Olivet Discourse to the destruction of Jerusalem and part to the end of the world or any other distant event. When it is said so positively here in the conclusion, all these things shall be fulfilled in this generation, it seemeth as if our Saviour had been aware of such misapplication of his words by adding yet greater force and emphasis to his affirmation. Verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So there was a gentleman in the comments who asked the question about the great white throne judgment. He says, when did this occur? It's a serious question. And then he says, instead of making accusations, how about answering a simple question? A thing none of you seem capable of doing or are willing to do. At this point, he has not interacted with anyone. He's just jumped into the arena of preterism, swords drawn, and like, right, you buggers, I'm going to take you all on and answer me this. So I obviously saw that. <laughs> it's a wonderful place to uh, to interject. So I said to this gentleman, what do you think the great white throne judgment is? Because in matters of theology and prophecy in particular, it's important that people conceptualize the subject of inquiry in a compatible way. And if they don't, they need to show they're working. What I mean by that is, you know, are we, are we going to be talking about the same thing? Often I find that in discussions between preterists and anti-preterists, the, uh, there's an, an inelegance to the conversation because people will discuss similar sounding things. They are referring to something by name, but they both have an extremely different definition of what that event is, what it entails, what it should look like. So while it sounds like they're discussing the same thing, they're not... And sometimes you'll notice people use that to their advantage, you know, and it's just, uh, it's a bit of a mess. Um, I wonder if I can make the chat visible. The chat becomes visible when people comment. So live chat, all messages are visible. Right now I can see it. Got it. Not is, but what was. Yeah, there we go. I mean, that's the question. That's the question. It was in the past, if you ask me. So I say, I get the sense that if I said the great white throne judgment happened in 70 AD, you'd question that on the basis of your understanding of what it is and what it should look like in your mind, meaning that you're not actually asking about timing. You mean to ask how a preterist conceptualizes the event which I think is a fundamental thing. I think that speaks to the misunderstanding and the stumbling block between discussions between preterists, partial preterists, anti-preterists. I think that, you know, this person might have a different conceptualization. And if they do, it won't fit. So we need to make sure we're working 
with the same piece of Tetris to get it to fall into the snug little crevasse which awaits it in our understanding. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, so I said that. So then I gave my explanation, and I said that the great white throne judgment is that which is referred to in John 5, 25, okay, where Jesus said, the time is now when he referred to those who hear the voice of the Son of God and shall rise from the dead or rise from the grave or the earth, right? Uh, some to condemnation, some to righteousness, you know, the, you know the, the part I'm referring to. And he said, the hour is coming and now is. Okay, so that's my, that, that's, there's a similarity there. Okay, there's something correlating the two. So I say that it was fulfilled within Jesus' generation and it describes the unification of man with God via spirit and truth instead of via the temple or the Samaritan Mount Jerusalem, right? <laughs> Jerusalem, whatever, however the Samaritans call their mountain. I always like to make reference to John 4 because I see it as such a significant part of what Christ's message was. You know, the message that uh, we're moving away from the physical old world and we're moving into the new world where we are the temples of God. There's, some, there's so much power there in John 4. I feel like the central crux of Christ's message can be found in that here we're moving away from temple worship and we are becoming the living temples. We're moving away from this mountain and we're becoming more, um, I don't know, spiritually enlightened through access to this, through access to the one unifying spirit of God. And it's so ubiquitous and it's so beautiful and yeah, it really resonates with me. I like to pull that into the discussion wherever I can. Um, yeah, so it signifies more than just that. But I want to be succinct. So I'll make the point about the great white throne judgment linking into John 5.25. That makes sense to me. Okay, and I think that that could make sense to anyone who hears it. All right, here we go, here we go. Ken Barber, hopefully this stays up for me to read on. Oh, no, it's fading. Here we go, it's still up there. I believe as a beyond fool preterist, approaching hyper, or even ludicrous speed, I have a question. I oh, know what have I done? What have I, done? Anyway, I have a question. If someone has never been under the old covenant, why would they need a new covenant? Oh, what a profound question. Ken, what a profound question. I love questions like that. They make you pause. They make you think, oh, wait, why? And that's the thing. You highlight the ludicrous nature of future expectancy of fulfillment when you when you pose a question like that. and It, it drives the fact home. Oh, we're talking about things that were fulfilled in the past. And you, and you, and you wonder, you wonder just how... I don't know how things could have been different if the church had grasped this, but hey ho, it is as it is. Um, so the most obvious evidence of the fulfillment of the great, the great, the great white throne judgment would be the destruction of the temple. I add that in as a tidbit, reference in Daniel twelve seven, where it speaks about the power of the holy people being completely crushed or completely shattered. And that would signify that all things have been fulfilled. And certainly, we saw that play out in history. Anyway, so I say my piece. I try and be succinct. And then Joshua. Oh, no, I said his name. I was referring to him as the gentleman. Okay, who, who knows, you know, it could be anyone. Anyway. Joshua, lovely name. Uh, it kind of, what's it, transliteration of the of the Yeshua. Is that, how you, is that the right term? Transliteration? Probably not. <laughs> but Joshua and Yeshua, right? So I'm arguing with Jesus on this one, which is <laughs> great, great position to be in. Uh, so Joshua says, it was a simple question. You could have just said, I don't know. Once again, you cannot prove your doctrine. Writing lots of meaningless words proves nothing. What? I mean, what a response, man. That is, this person has jumped into the arena. 
They've drawn their swords, okay? They have been swiftly slain. And then they're like the, the dark, the black knight from Monty Python's uh, Holy Grail. You know, it's just a flesh wound. It's, Tis but a scratch, okay? You have been destroyed, Joshua, with facts and knowledge, okay? And uh, it's, yeah, unscathed, okay? Unscathed. They stand accusing me of writing lots of meaningless words that prove nothing. And uh, I don't know, you know, you can't really work with that. So I, I dug in. Oh, I dug in. I dug in. I said, actually, actually, Joshua, this wasn't a simple question. Oh, no, this was quite a sophisticated question. And I say I answered it fully, you know, did answer it fully, but I'm going to up my case here, right? Team Preterism here. I answered it fully, okay? And then I told, I called him out on his attitude. And that's something I quite like to see is that expliticizing, to make explicit what's happening under the hood. You know, if someone's coming with an attitude and asking lots of questions, you might want to, you might want to hone in on the attitude and be like, right, I can hear the noises you're making, but what's this going on here? What's the attitude all about? So I just kind of called him on that. I said, look, you're coming at this with this atrocious attitude. You know, stop pretending. Stop pretending to engage me in good faith, okay? If the whole purpose of coming in here is to be wicked and to be hateful. Because that's obvious. It's so obvious to us when that happens. We can see the spirit with which someone approaches us, can't we? Sometimes making that explicit, I feel, is helpful in dialogue. You know, just to be like, look, let me shine a light on you right now so you can see where you're coming from. Because you come at this with your swords drawn. And then I then I then I get the get the sheepdogs out here and I say, let me direct your attention to the pertinent information that you glossed over in my last comment. And I just kind of show them again how that great white throne uh, judgment links in nicely to John 5:20 five okay so what we'd pairing up there pairing up revelation 20 11 to 15 with john 5 25 doesn't take too much doesn't take too much cognition to see the link between those verses and how they might apply through the preterist lens well i think that's everything i've got to say for now i have the local shop in mind um yeah, I'm going to get a cake. Okay, I'm going to. But I'm going to try and cut back too. Let's get those New Year's resolutions rolling out soon. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your comments. Uh, thank you for the, the couple of thumbs up as well. I'm going to maybe, you know, it's sort of like a lot of things. Like if you say you're going to work out, it can be difficult to work out. Sometimes the best thing to do is just to convince yourself to sit on the machine you intend to use to work out. For me, it's an exercise bike. So if I can just sit on it, and pedal around on it for five minutes if i can sell myself on that i can build a routine but i need to first make that action and i think that's what i've done here tonight so thank you for bearing with me as i convince myself to sit down and make a video even if it's just 10 minutes long if i sit down and do it i can have a bit more fun as well Think of the ambition I had. Was it eight months ago? I'm calling out Jeff Durbin and stuff. Like, I don't know what he's doing. He's sitting in some $100,000 studio. And here was it. I've got a twig. A little modest twig back there. So I'm going to bring it. You know, I'm going to turn this room into a $100,000 studio. Just so you wait. Um, and then me and Jeff Durbin, I'm sure we'll go at it. But who knows? Maybe he will still be inclined to have a little back and forth with me. I'll be wrapping his door soon, don't you worry. I'll be wrapping his door soon. Anyway, thank you. All the best. Uh, God bless you all. Hope you've had a, an interesting and a fulfilling 2023. Uh, maybe we could have a little chat. If anyone actually would like to make a little YouTube channel or Gmail account or something, if you're watching this, just write a comment and say, hey, let, let's have a discussion in the next video. Uh, throw that out to everyone, you know, uh, because it appears I can invite people with... Uh, relative ease now given the new platform upgrades so all the best guys thank you and um i'm sure i'll speak to you soon that was way too confident that was way too i don't know how to stop the stream <laughs>
<laughs> I'm going to try. Okay, all the best. God bless.